As I was baking pies last night, I couldn't help but remember a, a Thanksgiving day of my childhood. Four pies, four pies were cooling on the kitchen table. The potatoes were cooking on the stove top. The turkey was in the oven, and my mom was setting the table in the dining room. I was in my bedroom when suddenly I heard a loud shriek from my mom. She had stepped back into the kitchen to find our dachshund, Jaja, on a kitchen chair, paws on the table with her long nose deep into a pumpkin pie. Jaja responded to my mom's angry shriek by eating faster. I arrived in the kitchen just in time to see my mom pushing the poor dog out the back door, shouting after the dog, I hope you get sick. <sighs> Jaja did not get sick, but ooh, she was in the doghouse. And my mom was pretty much beside herself. <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? She said. Our company was coming in less than an hour. My mom looked quite distraught as she gazed at her ruined pie. Giggling, I wondered if a big dollop of whipped cream would cover up the hole in the middle. Maybe no one will notice, I said. Then we both laughed. My mom just roared with laughter. She laughed and laughed as she scraped that half-eaten pie into the wastebasket. And later, there was more laughter at the dinner table when she shared the pie incident with our guests. One less pie really didn't matter. That evening, there were three others. And it was a very memorable occasion, a very memorable Thanksgiving. And certainly the best Thanksgiving Jaja had ever had. I'm sure you all have memorable or humorous stories of Thanksgiving's past whether it was a kitchen snafu or a tender moment. And I hope you take the time to share those stories with your loved ones tomorrow. Even if you've told them a few times before, it's okay. It's good to share these stories. Conversation and laughter around the table should be as important as the turkey and all the fixings on the table. Laughter relieves anxiety. It helps us to lighten up and not take ourselves so seriously. Laughter, like giving thanks in prayer, is good for the soul. I have a short video that I'd like you to see. It's a, a clever song about Thanksgiving, family dynamics, and how we so easily lose sight of what's most important. Does anyone in this video remind you of a family member? Well, you better not say that out loud. I think we can all relate in one way or another to the family portrayed in this video. In our own way, we are all dysfunctional. In other words, sinful. We are self-centered, impatient, and distracted by our anxieties. The gospel lesson for this Thanksgiving is a timely word for people like us who live in a stressful and anxiety-ridden world. In this portion of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us to lighten up. That's really what Jesus is saying here. Lighten up, he says. Lighten up. Let go and let God. Trust God. Live gratefully and thankfully. Thanksgiving Day, if properly recognized, is a day not just for food, family, and football. It is also a day for spiritual reflection. It is an invitation to prayer. It is our annual reminder that every day, every moment of every day is lived in the grace of God. Yet how easily we forget. We become self-absorbed. 
we worry and fret about things, both big and small, much of which is, quite frankly, beyond our control. Worry is probably the most unproductive activity we could engage in, and yet it seems to occupy a fair amount of our time. And just so you know, I'm speaking as much to myself as I am to any of you. Sometimes I sweat the small stuff. I have a tendency to lose sleep over concerns that weigh on my mind and my heart. I have found myself fearful and anxious about things that are beyond my control. I have even doubted God's presence in the midst of troubles and heartache. And I know I'm not alone. We all come from a long line of worriers that can be traced all the way back to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were certainly anxious as they hid from God. They were fearful that they would die under God's wrath. Banished from the garden, they most certainly worried about how they would feed and clothe themselves in the barren wilderness. We stand convicted with Adam and Eve, dysfunctional, anxious, and sinful creatures that we are. So what does God say to us this Thanksgiving? He speaks to us with the gentle words of his son Jesus. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Don't worry. Spend some time bird watching. Yeah, look at the squirrels in your backyard too. The birds and the squirrels don't sow or reap or gather into barns. Yet your Heavenly Father feeds them, and you are far more valuable to God than they. Your Heavenly Father knows what you need. Trust Him. Live for Him. Strive above all for God's kingdom and His righteousness, and you will recognize God's provision in your daily life. Friends, these comforting words of Jesus describe what it means to live thankfully. It's about living with the assurance that God, our Creator, cares for us, provides for us, and redeems us. A bit later in the service, we'll be reciting Luther's explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed. God provides me, Luther writes, God, God provides me with food and clothing, home and family, daily work, and all I need from day to day. God also protects me in time of danger and guards me from every evil. All this he does out of fatherly and divine goodness and mercy, although I do not deserve it. Therefore, I surely ought to Remember what's next? Therefore, I surely ought to thank and praise, serve, and obey him. How can we not give thanks to such a God? How can we not live thankfully and generously in joyful response to the God who creates, redeems, and sanctifies us? Whether you are ready or not, the hectic and busy holiday season is upon us. I think you know that already, just giving you a little heads up on this. The crazy, crazy holiday season has come. Our worship service tonight invites us to stop, to reflect, to give thanks, and to hear God's promise. I invite you to do something right now. I invite you to hold out your hands with clenched fists. Just go ahead and do that, everybody. Clenched fists. And imagine the stress and the worries and the anxieties that you carry. Now, do this. Let go. 
Just let it go. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Now turn your hands, palms up, in a gesture of thanksgiving and praise. Open your hands and your heart to God's promise of forgiveness, life, and salvation. And finally, listen again to Paul's words about living thankfully. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.